Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Epcot for the International Food and Wine Festival 2023. This year's festival is one of the biggest ones yet with over 200 food and beverage items, four brand new boots, and I am so excited. I'm gonna give you the full tour, show you everything, and try lots of incredible snacks. So let's drink some wine, eat some food, and have a beautiful Epcot kind of day. Anywho's, Let's go do this. Like I mentioned, this year's Food and Wine Festival is one of the biggest ones yet. And here is a map of all of the global marketplaces, or as I like to call them, food and wine booths. And there are 32 of them. 32! Some of them are brand new this year, but they don't open up until September 22nd and August 15th. And I think we're just going to dive right on in and start making our way around World Showcase, sampling some of the food and wine. I'm very excited for the Brew and Wing Lab inside the Odyssey because that is a Muppets themed like little spot and they're coming up with some crazy concoctions like a pickled milkshake and peanut butter and jelly chicken wings so I think that's going to be interesting. In fact, I think we're going to start there. I picked myself up one of the handy dandy food and wine festival passports and these are really cool to have because it shows you all of the food and wine menus, even the locations of the booths, and it also has a meals fromage montage. If you uh, buy five of any of these items at the global marketplaces, you get little stamps and if you get all of these filled in, even on the same item, you get a prize at the end when you complete it. And it's really cool. So we're going to see if we could do that today as well. I'm gonna try to at least eat or drink one item from every single booth today and also keep an ongoing tally of how much I spend and then at the end I'll give you the grand total and let you guys know some of the items I enjoyed and probably some of the items I didn't like that much. We're gonna start right here at the Brewing Lab at the Odyssey and this is gonna be probably the most popular spot and I feel like the line is already pretty long mostly because of the Muppets. As you can see this is a Muppets lab and uh, they've got some uh, pretty crazy experiments in there. Look at how fun this place is. Welcome to the Brewing Lab at Odyssey. I love this so much. It's so cool seeing it all in here like this. I love seeing Muppets represented in the parks, especially in Epcot, you know? And there's probably so many cool details in this room here, but I think it's too crowded. I don't even think I could find a table. I waited just about 45 minutes in line for the Brew Wing Lab, and uh, we spent uh, just about $19. I think I'm gonna either round up or round down to the closest dollar to help keep things totaling up. And uh, now we gotta find a little spot and sit down and check out the food. All right, here is everything I got at the Brew Wing Lab. We got the pickle milkshake, we got the buffalo Brussels sprouts with plant-based blue cheese and ranch, and then the peanut butter and jelly chicken wings. You can see you got like peanuts on top there and then the sauce below is like a jelly red color. And I'm excited to try this. A lot of people have been saying they love the pickle shake. Some people are saying they don't love it. I'll figure out. I don't like pickles that much, but I do like milkshakes. All right, here we go. We're trying this pickle milkshake. First time. I'm very, I'm very nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. And uh, I'm sure you guys are going to get a kick out of my reaction. Unless it's really good. Maybe it's going to be a good reaction. But I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, wow. I like this. Wow. It kind of just tastes like a pickly shamrock shake. A pickly, a pickly shamrock shake. No, it really does taste good. I like this a lot. Holy moly, it doesn't taste too salty. In fact, I think it's more sweet than salty. Mmm. Oh, I like it. I don't know why I immediately think of shamrock shake. It might be just because of the color, but I think it tastes actually really good. It doesn't taste like salty. It tastes more sweet, like I said, and I can't really taste any pickle. Maybe a little bit of dill, but that's it. Otherwise, it's just a delicious milkshake. I'm shocked with this, actually. I really thought I wasn't going to like it. I was going to be like, blah, but this is, I, I don't mind it at all. 
now that we got the pickle milkshake business taken care of which honestly like i said a lot of people said it was really horrible but it's it's not that bad at all i want to dive into the chicken wings and i think uh, i'm going to start with a little drumstick look at that you got to make sure you get a little bit of the peanut butter and the jelly look at how cool that wing looks actually i'm not too sure if i should maybe i should wash it down with the pickle milkshake peanut butter jelly and pickle peanut butter jelly pickle wings i like that so here we go that's actually not bad. Here we go. What a combination. Oh no. That's not a good combination. The flavor of the peanut butter and jelly wings is actually pretty good. On its own, I like these a lot, but it's not really good when you mix it with the pickle milkshake. But I am a little sad at the size of the chicken wings. you think they'd be a little bit bigger. There wasn't much meat on there. And it's very sticky, very sticky, sticky wings. Now, I am a sucker for Brussels sprouts. I love them, but I never had buffalo Brussels sprouts before. But what a combination. Like, literally, all this food together. Brussels sprouts, pickle milkshake, peanut butter and jelly chicken wings. Like, that stuff shouldn't be consumed altogether. But I'm excited to try these. Here we go. And it also comes with plant-based uh, blue cheese and ranch. I don't know if I said that or not. But here we go. Oh, huh. Oh, wow. I like that buffalo sauce, too. The Brussels sprouts have a little kick to them. It's very, very strong hot sauce on there, and it's kind of making everything spicy. So I got like a little spicy, pickly, peanut butter and jelly taste in my mouth, and uh, I'm not sure how to process that. <laughs> but overall, I really did love the pickle milkshake probably the most out of everything that I got here. We made our way over to Coastal Eats, and here is a look at the menu. There's no line for this booth, luckily. They've got the lump crab cake with Cajun spice vinegar slaw, oysters Rockefeller, and then they've got a wildly brute and a, a Cape Cotter. Cape Cotter. It's body Blair potato vodka with cranberry, pomegranate, and lime. And that's what we ended up getting. I got the Cape Cotter right here, and then I wanted to try the lump crab cake. So so uh, we'll give them a go. And I spent $19, $19 together for this. First things first, we're trying the Cape Codler. Cape Codder. I think I keep on saying Cape Codler, but I'm gonna mispronounce a bunch of stuff today. So cheers. Ooh, that's very nice. I like it. It's actually got a nice refreshing taste to it. I can't, I, the, the vodka is not very overpowering. The berry is perfect, like that pomegranate in there. I like this, this is a nice refreshing cocktail, but I think it's $12. And now we're gonna try the crab cake. Of course, we gotta get that lemon in there. Oh yeah, there we go. I think I just shot some lemon juice in my camera lens, so I'm gonna have to wipe it later. I like that this crab cake is holding together so well. I feel like a crab cake should hold together well. I don't like it when they fall apart, but uh, yeah, here we go. This crab cake with that Cajun spiced vinegar slaw is actually really good. I do like it a lot. Uh, I do wish it was a little bit hotter. I feel like it's a little bit cold, but that could have been me. I don't know how long I waited, maybe 10 minutes, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And I wish they gave you more than one crab cake for $7, just one. We're starting out like pretty heavy with multiple things at each booth, but once we get into World Showcase, I'll probably start trickling down to like one item per booth and have like a steady rotation of like food, uh, mixed drinks, desserts, and stuff like that. But uh, so far, we've averaged $18 and $19, and we got to keep moving along. There's a lot in this area, and we haven't even gotten into World Showcase yet. Is that door opening by itself? I think the wind blew it open. In the mood for something sweet or savory? Ah, I ran into my friends, Brandon and his mom and dad and Gabby. Brandon and Gabby just got married. We were at their wedding at the Grand Floridian. Yeah. yeah. Very fancy. Well, happy birthday, guys. I hope you enjoy food and wine and uh, go Kansas City. Yeah, you're the best. Ah. You're the best. <laughs> 
Now we've made our way over to the flavors from fire and I always get confused because I want to say the flavors from Florida but they've got some good items here this year. The impossible burger slider which looks good. I might actually want to try that. Smoked corned beef. Ooh, the new uh, chimichurri marinated skirt steak taco. That looks fantastic and then they have a spiced chocolate tart. Lots of good things so we're gonna have to dive in. I also love how they cook it all outside right there. Very fancy. Very cool. <laughs> Sometimes you come upon a booth that has multiple things that you want to try. And in this case, uh, I feel like that's flavors of fire. Flavors from fire. Uh, so I got everything. I got all of the food. I had to try the impossible burger slider. It comes with wasabi cream and spicy Asian slaw and then the smoked corned beef because I wanted to get my stamp for a meals fromage montage and I'll show you that. And then we've got the spiced chocolate tart with a barbecue potato chip crust, salted whiskey caramel and smoked sea salt. And then this is new this year. This is a chimichurri marinated skirt steak with crushed avocado grilled corn salsa and uh, cilantro lime cream and it all looks amazing. I ran into some more friends. Goo to you. They have an awesome channel. And check out the uh, Roosevelt's, the Remy, the Ratatouille Roosevelt. It's yeah, it's very festive. It's fitting for today. But uh, you guys are going to try the Impossible Slider and let us know what you think. I love how you're so gentle with that tiny burger. <laughs> <laughs> it is, right? That's actually really good. Yeah? I think the wasabi cream is new this year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They changed it just a little bit. Give it an analysis. It's actually really close to a burger. Hmm. Pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good. The yeah? The, the wasabi cream adds a little bit of spice, which I really like. The texture is spot on for what I'm looking for. If it had more sauce, I think it would be better. But... Nice! Well, you heard it here, folks. Goo to you loves the Impossible Slider. And I tried it too, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. I could have used more sauce and I'm always impressed with the meat. You know what I mean? The fact that it's not meat, but it tastes like meat. And uh, it's always good showing off other creators too. Like I said, we're gonna be meeting tons of friends today. Some of them I've showed before in the video, some uh, you have never heard of and some that are well known. And it's cool just getting to hear uh, different perspectives from different creators in the community and kind of just spreading spreading it out there and showing everyone and giving you guys a chance to meet some new creators. I love that. I feel like more people should do it. I, am I ran into my friends and they are actually live streaming in the park right now. We're the park hoppers. The park hoppers. I'm Very Mark. nice. I'm Derek. Very fancy. And uh, she's going to try the corned beef hash. Give it a go, you know. I've never had corned beef before. Never. Never. Ah, well, well, I'm glad to see you try it. All right. This looks really good, though. And a great portion. Yeah, it's got some potato chips on there. It's really good. You like it? What do you think? Like, what is it? What tastes it? Okay, I taste a lot of cheese. It's Lots of cheese. Creamy. It's very salty, but you do taste the beef. So it's a good blend of all those things. Nice. Yeah. And that's on the Emile Fromage Montage. That is right there. Yeah. Now we gotta find out what the reward is at the end of the. Oh, the well, that's what I'm working for. I'm just starting. This is my first one of the day, oh, so I'm gonna goodness. try to get at least one of everything and then collect my prize. Thank you so much. Yeah. Man. Make sure you guys check out their channel. I'll put a link in the description. Unfortunately, this little chocolate bar has seen better days and it has melted. But uh, I'm gonna give it a go. Actually, I'm with Tim. Yeah. And Tim. I dislike this. You dislike this? A lot. It was the worst thing that I had today. Really? So I, want, I don't want to put any thoughts in your head, but I want to hear what you think of it. Oh, I'm trying it right now then. All right, let's see it. Here we go. Watch him love it. I like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that. Try another bite. Try another Wait, bite. Well, you, try that thing. Let me try, try this on its thing. own. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> Part of it. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. You didn't have any of that. No, I don't like that. I get what Tim was saying. This is definitely a unique item, mostly because of the barbecue potato chip with whiskey caramel in it. That's what I didn't like. I like the chocolate, but this little chip right here, and it happens to be on the bottom of it too, but it's melting. I don't know if you can see. Look at that. 
It's all like ground up barbecue potato chip under there, I feel like. That's what I don't like, but this completely melted in minutes. I don't like when everything's like centered inside the taco. And also I think it's kind of a hard shell too. I don't know, I can't tell. I think it was supposed to be a soft shell, but there we go. I'm gonna fold it over just like that and uh, go in for the first bite. That guacamole could add a little more spice to it, but I really love this skirt steak. It's got a nice little char, good flavor, good season, and uh, yeah, it's okay. Overall, everything here has been okay, except for this little barbecue potato chip. Now we can finally start making our way into World Showcase. I like how they have a lot of the Brew Wing Lab like advertisement out here. Flavor experiments, test the taste of tomorrow today. That is such a cool Epcot thing to say. Test the taste of tomorrow today. If you guys haven't picked up on it yet, I've been swapping out my hats. I brought two hats with me because I knew it was going to be a hot day today. So I wanted to have a nice dry hat that I could like alternate with. So I have one hat here and then I have another hat right down here. Look at it. It's just hanging out. So that you take one off and let it dry off a little bit. The first booth as soon as you walk in Epcot's World Showcase is Mexico and they have a lot on the menu here. They have a tostada carnitas that looks pretty good. Oh and then they also have a beef short rib taco and an impossible tres leches. Look at that impossible tres leches. But I think I might want to get myself a little margarita maybe. Maybe a little trouble in paradise. Ooh, that sounds good. I like the name too, Trouble in Paradise. I ran into some more friends, Magic Journeys, there, all guys. the way from Disneyland. Yeah, here enjoying the Florida weather. <laughs> yep, I can tell you guys this, this Magic Journeys is definitely one of my favorite YouTube channels to watch for Disneyland food. It's so great, all food actually. They are so awesome. It's great. You. Oh no! <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Look at that! Oh, now I feel so fancy. You have a moment to shine. I know, right? He has <laughs> the best content. I think. Yes. Honestly, I've seen his content. It's phenomenal, beautiful storytelling. That is best. I feel so Pretty fancy good. right now. Wow! <laughs> every time I watch videos, I'm like, I feel like I'm at Disney World. I want to go back. Seriously, you make us want to go back every single day. I know. I love that. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, and you guys got food too from Mexico, yeah, we right? Got the it was pretty good. I just felt the pork was a little, a little salty. Little salty. That, it was not bad. I love the tostada. Very crispy. Uh, we've had tostadas before that are very stale. Don't like that. This is perfect. Very good. Aside from the salty carnitas, but aside from that, very good. Well, there you go. You have it. Yeah. Make sure you guys check out their channel. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, yeah, Thank enjoy you. food and wine. Thank, Thank you, Nate. You <laughs> I love running into Magic Journeys and it was so cool to be able to see them for their first time at Food and Wine Festival and uh, also that we got a little food review from them. And now I'm going to try the Trouble in Paradise margarita from the Mexico booth. So I, I'm kind of excited. I don't want to be in trouble but at the same time I kind of want to be in paradise. So here we go. <laughs> That's good. That's a good margarita. I don't know why they say it's trouble. Maybe it is trouble. Maybe after one or two of these, I might get in trouble. I like it. It's very refreshing, very berry-ish, not too strong. Yeah, I like it. We need to keep moving along and we made our way over to China, but I was looking through the menu and there wasn't anything new except for I think a new beer. And uh, last year this uh, crispy duck bao bun was just a regular duck bao bun, but this year it's uh, like a fried one, so that's new. But I think I'm gonna skip over since everything like I've had before, if you guys watch my older video, you'll see all of these items, even the Dan Dan noodles I had, and that was popular. Uh, I think I remember I didn't like it because it was like too spaghetti it was it was honestly like spaghetti noodles but uh, yeah so we're moving along the lines for all of the food boots have been super long today I think the longest so far has been inside the Odyssey like I said I was in there for like 45 minutes I felt like and uh, you can definitely see the popularity of an opening day festival I'm not too sure if we're gonna get every single uh, stand done today I want to but we're gonna see maybe we might run out of time at the end there but uh, we'll try to skip over the ones that really don't have anything new and focus on the bigger newer items you know 
Next up on our path is going to be Kenya. And I always like coming to Kenya because they have some of my favorite items. This Pier Pier Skewered Shrimp. Pier Pier. I don't even know if that's the proper way to say it, but I love it. It's got a nice citrus flavor to it. And then the Kenyan coffee barbecued beef with sweet potato corn pop. So all of this is actually good. And I think we're going to get both of them. In true fashion, we grabbed ourselves the closest garbage can and it's time to dive in and eat. Here is the coffee beef and then the shrimp skewer. I love this and I also love this on the side there. It kind of looks like couscous. I don't know if it's couscous though. Is it couscous? I think it's couscous. Oh, and Kristen's here right down Main Street. Time for some uh, Kenya. Time for some Kenya food. I haven't had this one yet. Really? Not today. Well, I'm excited. Have you ever had it before? Honestly, I don't know if I have. I feel like I might have had the shrimp before, unless I'm thinking of the shrimp that they have for Flower and Garden. Oh, maybe. But that one's know. the berry one. Oh, uh, yes. I think I've had that. I don't know if I've oh, had okay. this before. All right. Well, you're going to try some. Yes. Which one do you want to go for? Let's do the beef first. Okay. Go ahead. Get in there. Look at that. Is that mashed potatoes under there? I think so. Or is it pap? I think it, I think it might be like grits. It looks, yeah, it might be that. Pap. Yeah, they have that at uh, Boma. It looks like mashed potatoes, though. Mmm. That's actually pretty good. The beef has a really nice flavor. Coffee? I, I, I could definitely taste the coffee. And I feel like you could taste, they might like grill it fresh back there. I could taste maybe a little char on it. Really? Tasty, yeah. Wow. All right, I'm going to try it. Now it's time to get in on the shrimp business here. I love this shrimp and it comes on a little skewer, but I just pulled off one because we're sharing it, but it is so good. I already know. Both of these items are actually really good, but honestly, I might have to stick with the shrimp. I really love the shrimp. Uh, it, the seasoning's great, but the coffee's good. I don't have any napkins, so Kristen grab me a leaf. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't do anything because I don't have any napkins. She's like, here. <laughs> Look at it. it actually worked a little bit. Nature's napkin. Nature's napkin. Yep. But anyway, get the shrimp. Any hose, definitely try the shrimp, but both of them are good. We've only got a handful of the boots done already, and we're already at the $100 mark. We've already spent $100, and I'll give you the grand total at the end, but it's time to move along from Kenya and uh, continue making our way around. We have Germany, Italy, America, uh, Japan, so many things. <laughs> coming up uh, so we got to start spreading it out and maybe cutting down to just one item one item on each spot before we make our way to Germany I did want to show you guys the Alps which is right next to Germany here it's got a very long line and most of the items here is cheese they do have a dark chocolate fondue though I don't know if I would want to wait in line just for that oh it's a pound cake fondue wow I was wondering how they were gonna do that I mean it looks I mean maybe I don't know though. Oh, you had it? Yeah, they give you a bunch of different things to dip in the fondue. They give you meringues, a gooseberry. Which gooseberry? Was, I didn't know what it was? A raspberry, strawberries, and then the little cup of dark chocolate and the pound cake too, and then you dip it all in the dark chocolate. Wow, maybe I don't know. Doll. It's, it's a little too much for the heat. I will. Is that what it is? It's, it's a little too much for the heat. It's very. It's a very heavy dish. I'll take your word on it. Here is. I'll take your word on it. Since we didn't get anything at the Alps, I feel like we definitely need to get something here at the Germany booth. And there's actually a couple of things here that I love and also something that we can get a stamp for on our Emile's uh, Fromage Montage. With this purchased, I am now just one away from collecting my prize at the end there. And that's because we got the Schnickeliden. Schnickeliden. Schnick, schnick, I, I'm not even too sure how to pronounce it, but it's just basically German mac and cheese. It's German mac and cheese. German mac and cheese. That's something I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Really? I, if I you can't. did, can you just give me a ch schnickeliden? Let me read it. Let me read it. I need to know. Schnickeliden. Germany. I just, the way I read words is how I try to pronounce them, and sometimes it comes out crazy. Schinkenuden. Schinkenuden. Shinkanuden. Okay, try, well, Kristen's gonna try the Shinkanuden. I'm gonna try the apple strudel. Apple strudel. And then we have the beer flight here. I had to get the beer flight. Like, you know what I mean? It's Germany. Oh, are you going? Oh, look at that cheese. Oh. 
Womp, womp, womp. You're gonna have to pull it again. I think this is like a knife mac and cheese. Which I don't know if Wait, it's a good have sign. you never had this no, before? No, I have. I've had this before. I'm like, yeah, you're like the mac and cheese like like thing. You know what I mean? You you love mac and cheese. Yeah, but this was very solid today. I don't know. One thing I'll say about it is it is so greasy. Like if if you're trying to watch your stomach or something, look at the grease in this tray. I mean, there's so much grease in it, but it has a really nice onion oh, and ham Oh, I didn't flavor. see that until you pointed out afterwards. You can't really see it in there, but there's like a little puddle there, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very greasy, but like sometimes you need the grease when you're doing these long Epcot days. I like it. I think the flavor's good with the ham and onions, um, but it's something that might not be for everything because of the grease. Thanks, Emil. Before I dive into my apple strudel, I do want to do the beer flight, but I took my card out and I forgot how they said it goes. I do this every single year and I don't know which one is which. Well, actually, um, I'm going to know because either one of these ends is the prickly pear Hefeweizen. So as soon as I taste pear, I'll know to start on that side. So I'm going to try this one first. This is either going to be prickly pear or... Kolsch. Kolsch? Yeah, Kolsch. That's it. So I'll find out. If it's Perry, it's it's Perry. If it's not, it's Kolsch. I can't tell what that is, but it's delicious. It does taste a little sweet. I feel like it's the pear. I feel like this is the pear one. All right. So then we know that this one's the pear, and then this one must be the fest beer. Fest beer. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, that one is so good. The middle one. And now this one must be the Kolsch. The Kolsch. Ew. I don't know which one was the pair. <laughs> I feel like you I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is the pair. I didn't like it. And this one was the Kolsch. I feel like this is the one I like. <laughs> The first one that I tried was the Kolsch, and then the last one was the pear one. I didn't like the pear one. If anything, I went Kolsch and then the middle one, but now it's time to get to the strudel, and I didn't ask for extra icing. Look at this. What is that? Look at that little dab there. I love this strudel, though. It's usually so good. It's usually the same strudel. Oh, with the assist. Thank you. I was just going to maw it. I was just literally going to maw it with my fork. <laughs> okay, now we have it all together. I love this strudel so much. It's so strudely. <laughs> it really is, though. It is so good. I wish I had more sauce, though. I definitely suggest you gotta get more of that. Up next on our journey through World Showcase is going to be Spain. And this was actually introduced back in 2017. So it's a fairly new food and wine booth. And the menu is actually pretty good. It always has this paella that I love. And it comes with chorizo and shrimp on it. Right there. That's one of my favorite things of the Food and Wine Festival. And right now it seems like the line is actually pretty busy. It looks pretty busy, but there's three cast registers. So I think I might hop in just so I can get that paella again and see if it's still one of the best things at the festival. There's my paella. But look at that charcuterie in a cup. Those look so fancy. I love that. Thank you, guys. Oh, look at this paella, though. It is so piping. Like, there's such a pile on there. Oh, oh I also got a sangria. It is so busy today at Food and Wine Festival. There's no tables or trash cans available. Literally, there's nowhere to eat the food. So now I'm just eating my food on the railing here. I'm taking a knee. <laughs> I got the rosé sangria right here. This looks so good. It was only $6 for this. I feel like that's a lot of sangria for $6, especially at Disney. And look at the size of the shrimp inside this pa uh, paella. Look at that. Doesn't it just look so good? I love this paella. This is one of my favorite things from the festival, and I'm sure it's going to stand up to that. It's still, it's still going to be one of my favorite things at the festival. All right. First, I always eat the shrimp first, and I always heard if you pinch the tail, the shrimp just slides right out. So I'm going to give that a natural try here. 
<laughs> Whoa! It worked! Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. It's so good. And then the rice. <laughs> Phenomenal. It's still that good. Honestly, at the end of the video, I'm probably going to give you guys like a top three like favorite things. And unless we come across some very miraculously amazing items, which you never know, America has a full like new menu. But I feel like this may be still be in my top three. I almost spilled that. <laughs> but here we go. The rosé sangria. Like I said, look at the amount of sangria they give you for $6. And plus this very fancy glass. I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio in The Great Gatsby. You know? I, oh, wait. I guess I can't hold it that way. But here, cheers. Ooh, that is so good. We're going to keep the train of moving all night long and hop directly over to Italy. And the menu this year is actually a little bit cheaper than normal. A lot of people actually don't like the Italy booth because usually the portions actually don't equal out to the price that you're paying. But I see that they're uh, working with that this year a little bit. They've got some new things, some pastas, some lemon ricotta cheesecake. You got to get that. That's a good stuff. <laughs> And then Italian mineral, uh, mineral water, minimal water, minimal water, <laughs> and then some prosecco down there. But I know someone who really doesn't like the Italy booth, and uh, we're gonna grab something to eat together. My friend Ryan actually does not like the Italy booth. In fact, he made a video, um, basically talking about how it's the worst food and wine booth. It's not hard to beat, I'll say that. I mean, I mean, we're, we're also talking about price point wise. Price point, yeah. If you're talking food options, if you're talking variety, if you're talking price point specifically, it's the most expensive every single time. So that's part of it. And you gotta think about that because- Yeah, it's important. Are expensive, you know? Well, you were the first person I thought of when I was like, you know what? I want someone to eat the food in Italy with me. And what did we end up getting? We ended up getting the, see, I'm gonna totally butcher this, cavatelli. Oh, cavatelli. Cavatelli, cavatelli. Some noodles and some bacon and some cheese. And uh, it was $10 for this. 10 bucks. Which at, at, at uh, Olive Garden, you could get an all you can eat three course meal for, I'm sure. But and endless soups and breadsticks. <laughs> and, oh, and those breadsticks. <laughs> yeah. With breadsticks, I would change them out. Best, best booth. Hey, can we talk about this table here? What is happening? Look at this. It's like they're upgrading, they're evolving. Disney's listening that we need tables in between trash cans and on top. It's one of the light posts that they're redoing right now, but it works as a table because they're covering it up in case you are actually wonder wondering what this is. It's a light post under here that they're replacing. Well, I like it. All right, well, let's try some of this pasta. Okay. I wish these noodles were long enough so we could uh, do the Lady lady in the tramp? <laughs> but they're tiny. Oh, that would have been funny. Here we go. Bone apple teeth. Bone apple teeth. Oh my god, I don't like that. <laughs> Instantly. It's what? Bad. Ryan, what did you just pull out of your teeth? Don't worry about it. It's one of these green things. <laughs> it was bay. It was a bay leaf. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Now that I think about it, I don't like the sauce though. It's a cream based sauce. But like actually all together, if I didn't like that cream based sauce, I think it would be not bad. It's like a creamy spatzel, but like Italian. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it's like just regular Italian dish. I shouldn't say that, but it's, it's fine. unique. Make sure you check out Ryan's channel for the love of theme parks and I'll put a link in the description for you to check it out. And also his video about the Italian, the Italy booth uh, last year. Uh, it was so funny. And now it's time uh, to make it to America. We're halfway there. We're halfway. And uh, I got to recap and see how much money we spent already at the halfway point. Next up is the flavors of America. America. And they've got some good things on this menu. An Italian hot beef sandwich with uh, spicy Giordani and uh, ah, <laughs> spicy Giordani. <laughs> I knew it was going to get you going. But yeah, they have an Italian hot beef sandwich and then it uh, looks like a freshly baked carrot cake with walnuts and cream cheese icing. I think that's what I'm going to get. But they have tons of other stuff here, like a seafood stew and uh, I'm not even too sure what this is, but it looks like it's tossed in salsa verde. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna stick with the beef. Here is the hot beef sandwich. Look at this little thing. Yeah, I like it. And it comes with some au jus there. I have a feeling this is gonna be something I love. I really do. I love French dips. I like roast beef. I love Beefy King. You guys ever hear of Beefy King? We gotta go to Beefy King one day. So I might like this a lot. And then here is the fresh baked carrot cake. Look at that, freshly baked. And uh, we're gonna dive in. I got a beautiful view and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna dive right on in. I'm gonna squish down my Italian beef sandwich a little bit because I don't want it falling all over the place. Can't have that. Squish it together. I hope the bun holds up. It looks like the bun's got some good integrity. <laughs> I feel like it's not gonna collapse, but uh, we gotta dip it. And you gotta, you gotta get it a lot. You gotta really soak up that au jus and not spill it everywhere. But look at this. Oh, it's not even enough. You got it more, longer. There we go. Look at that. That's the bite. It's gonna be juicy too. Mm. Oh my God, it's spicy. I, I, maybe, I thought it was spicy, but I think this was just super salty. Maybe I need to try it just on its own. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure it was the au jus, but I'm gonna try the uh, uh, hot beef or the roast beef on its own. But first I need to get to the carrot cake here. Oh, it is soft. It's very soft. Now this stuff, I feel like I've had the Italian beef here before. Maybe it was for a different festival, I don't know. But I like carrot cake. Okay. That's the one, wow. I like it a lot. This is so good. And I love those walnuts in there. Look at that. Oh much too good oh no i'm gonna lose it before it focuses in the beef is definitely better on its own i grabbed a little bit from the side here and it's good flavorful beef the au jus, like i said i think it's just too salty it might be the bottom of uh the pot there also look at the line in there do you see that very interesting but the carrot cake that was amazing. I really did love this. And I love walnuts too. So adding those together, top notch. Good job. Good job, America. Good job. Thank you, fire safety shut off valve. Gotta keep moving along to Japan next. And look at all of the people down here in Japan. It's very crowded over here. Holy moly. We can check off America and we can successfully say we've made it halfway. The uh, America uh, Pavilion is exactly the halfway point through World Showcase and our total so far is $163. I've spent $163 on all of the food and drinks that you have seen so far in this video. I mean, also take out like some bottles of water and some Powerades, but uh, just about that amount of money and now we are coming up on Japan. Japan Japan is the next spot, and then we are going to make our way uh, back through the rest of World Showcase. If I was to go in order, up next would be Japan, but I don't think we're going to have enough time. I want to make sure I make it out front so that I could uh, get my prize from Emile's montage, Emile's fromage montage, uh, but at least I wanted to show you guys the menu. They have a teriyaki chicken bun, they have some rolls, and then they have the beef Wagyu Don. I feel like I should come back and try this. If I had more time, I would definitely do it, but the line's pretty long here. But that sounds like something I would totally like. Beef Wagyu Don. Wagyu Don. Wagyu Don. For my last stamp on Emile's Fromage Montage, I'm gonna get the griddle cheese from Greece. Uh, it's such a popular item. It's like literally melted cheese on a griddle with pistachios. And I've got some friends that are actually gonna try it for me. What kind of cheese? It's hulami cheese. Hulami cheese. H-O-U-L-A-M-I. Wow. I asked, I asked the lady, I said, what is hulami cheese? And she said, cheese from Greece. Ah. <laughs> Well, I ran into uh, Corey Meets World. How's it going? Yeah, and then Steve, Steve's World, is all things fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna try the griddle cheese. Yes, I've never had it. And I'm it's excited. Like, it's all crispy and it's got uh, pistachios. Uh, pistachios and honey. Uh -huh. Very fancy. 
whatever umami cheese is. Absolutely. How do you not like that? Okay. It's just not my. Uh, it's just not my cup of cheese. <laughs> it's like a really good grilled cheese. It's not like the sweetness of the honey. Oh. It's very very good. Grease is delivering. Yeah. Oh wow. That Look at really that. On one side. You call that the undercarriage? Uh, yeah, that's the undercarriage. The undercarriage. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think all things fun? Very good. It is. Delicious. Yeah. It's very delicious. Good. Good. There you go. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Actually, no. You probably heard it there first. <laughs> There we go. I'm all stamped up and all I have to do is show up at the last booth. Uh, I think it's called the Shimmering uh, Sips. Uh, it's at the front of the park and they're going to stamp it and I'm going to get my prize. We did it. We did it. They convinced me to try it now and I lost a pistachio. That was the thing I was looking forward to. Oh boy. Nothing to mask the actual taste. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh. I yeah. Yo, yeah. oh, I like that. I like that. It's sweet. It don't taste like cheese. No. I do like it. <laughs> this area I like a lot because you have two boots right next to each other. You have Belgium right there and then Brazil right here. And B Brazil actually doesn't have much on the menu. I was looking at it. They only have two like little food uh, offerings. One of them being the Brazilian cheese bread that everybody loves. And then you also got the pork belly here that I think I've had that before. Because I remember getting the pork belly with that black lager down there. And it wasn't my favorite. So I think we're gonna stick to just, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the waffle behind us yo how about how funny that is I was really at a moment where I couldn't remember what the name of the booth was and I said just waffle because the booth's name is Belgium and they sell waffles there so immediately I just thought Belgium and I just said the waffle here is a look at the menu over in Belgium. Like I was saying, they serve waffles here. They have the berry waffle, the chocolate waffle, and then they also have the beer braised beef. Ooh, beer braised beef. <laughs> guys, I usually take a lot of photos in the park, but I really never show you guys on camera. But this is an exception. I'm like so excited right now. Look at that, what is <laughs> ah, from Puerto Rico? From Puerto Rico. Oh my god, <laughs> this is the best day ever. Look at this. Oh, she smells greasy. I can yeah. see that. Oh, is it a girl? Yeah, it's a yes. girl. Oh, what a princess. <laughs> that is too cool. So we did end up getting a little bit uh, of the cheese bread from Brazil, and then we got the berry compo waffle. It's a, Look it's at the that. Brazil Belgium special right here. The Brazil Belgium special beer braised beef. I smell like beef. You ever hear that? No. What on earth is that? <laughs> I smell like beef. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot here, and uh, Kristen already dived into the breeze, uh, uh, the beer braised beef, yeah. and I'm gonna go in for a little bit too. It looks like Denty Moore. I feel oh like we God. had this conversation. I, we did. I we did. It was. Yeah, I, I think it was it here. Was it? It was this item. I didn't know what Denty Moore was. And yeah. Now, I know. now you know. But it does. It does. It looks just like Denty Moore. This is good, but I'm more excited for the waffle itself. That just tastes like Denny Moore to me. If it had maybe bigger vegetables, I'd probably be excited. But I do love the berries here. Berries and cream. Berries. Is anyone else going to eat this? I'm going to just fork it. Yeah, go for it. Fork it. Ooh. All right. I'm going in on the berries and cream waffle here. Berries and cream. After I dropped half of this Belgian waffle on my shirt, which it's coming clean. I think I just need to go to the bathroom and get more water. I was only like one last sip of Dasani in there, but uh, it's really good. I like it a lot. And Kristen, you like the cheesy bread? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I feel like the cheesy bread here at the festival is like hit or miss. Sometimes yeah. the inside is like too, too gooey. It kind of it's like a weird texture for me and the outside is sometimes not crispy but this is like perfect cheesy bread consistency for me the outside is crispy today and the inside is just the right amount of gooey cheese Ooh, can you guys pull it apart like oh, together oh cheese pull ready this is like a wishbone on thanksgiving whoever right gets the bigger family. red makes a wish the right family oh cheese you won 
I That's won. it, you get the wish. Uh, I wish. For more cheese bread. For more cheese bread. <laughs> Enough of the waffle business. We made our way down to France, but this line is also super long. We're definitely gonna have a part two for this video, which makes sense because there's still some boots that haven't opened up yet. But I really did wanna try at least one thing from each item. It just didn't work out that way today. But here is the menu with France, and they got the escargot croissant, which is something I swear I will never eat again. But maybe. Maybe if we do a part two, I'm coming back to France to uh, get the uh, escargot croissant. Yeah, maybe I'll do it. I had to step inside real quick to get some AC, but you guys might have noticed I pulled a little hat trick because I ran into another friend who uh, happened to have an extra hat that he designs and he just makes them for himself and he wanted to give me one of his because he brought a backup too. So now I've got three hats. I'm literally walking around food and wine with three hats. But it was really cool uh, to run into uh, Corey and Steve, and I'm glad that uh, they like the griddle cheese, and I actually like the griddle cheese, which is crazy. I wasn't expecting that. Ireland is our next stop, but we are definitely running out of daylight, so we gotta keep moving. But we had to stop and get the warm chocolate pudding cake with the Irish cream liqueur custard. I actually like this a lot. Last year, I voted this as one of my favorite desserts, I remember. It just is so warm and delicious. As long as it's warm, it's gotta be, it's gotta be warm. Look at that. Oh, this is my, fa this is my favorite dessert here. Yeah, I said it's a, a close up there for me too. Look at that. So, is it warm? It's so warm and gooey in there. Oop. The vanilla sauce. Cheers. Cheers. Don't drop this one on your shirt. Oh, I won't. <laughs> it is so hot. It is I am so super hot. paranoid. I'm gonna drop this on my shirt now. It is so hot. <laughs> but I'm going in for it. Still my favorite dessert at Food and Wine. Hot. Very hot. Warm my mouth. Yeah, but it is so good, and it's just so soft. It's it's literally the perfect. I don't know what would you call it texture. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it just, it literally just crumbles. It's, it's so like good. A, it's almost like, it, I mean, it is a warm chocolate pudding cake, but it really is almost like a pudding. It's like a pudding, it's like, a pudding like, like substance. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Very good. I'm so glad we got that. The pudding cake definitely slapped, and now we made our way over to Canada. It looks like they just have the uh, regulars here. The Canadian cheddar bacon soup with pretzel roll, which is a big favorite here. And then the Canadian filet. Everyone loves that filet too. It's a good combination. And it's only $9.75, but it's probably only about two ounces maybe, two ounces of filet. And those are the two things that they have on the menu. They're very popular. They're here every year. And then uh, so one line and one uh, Cabernet. That's all they have, four things here. I'm kind of shocked by that. Finally, it is time to cash in our prize at the Shimmering Sips. Look at that. And also, I think we're gonna get ourselves a celebratory uh, mimosa flight. I think we're gonna get ourselves the mimosa flight. I love this and uh, our little snack. I'm here for my last stamp. I did it. I did it. I will cherish this forever. Are you gonna carry all those? Look at this, you're walking around with six, six drinks. All for me. Yeah. <laughs> and here is my prize. I spent all that money and I got this for free. Look at that. It's a whole ice cream and a collectible cup. This isn't one of those, oh it is a plastic cup. I thought it was gonna be like a, like a sturdy plastic cup. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool that they give you something to build towards. I really love the idea behind it. I love the cookie stroll. That's like one of my favorite ones. That's for the festival of the holidays. And they usually do something like this for every single festival. And I'm pretty sure that's cheesecake flavored ice cream in there. So it's like a, a cheese dessert. And you can see there's like cracker crumbs in there. So it's like a cheesecake soft serve in a fancy cup that says in meals fromage montage. I am going to enjoy this $200 free ice cream I have uh, acquired today. Very delicious. Oh, it is actually really delicious. I do like that actually. Wait a second here. You got a little strawberry ice cream in there. It's a strawberry cheesecake! Oh! <laughs> Makes total sense now! 
I honestly don't think I could have asked for a better way to end Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. Sipping on mimosas, fireworks happening in the background, talking to friends. I love this. Another year, another year, and hopefully next year. <laughs> Cheers. Fireworks are over. Look at this on the way out. Holy moly. This is food and wine right here. This is the best part of the night. Yeah. You shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of sweaty people who are full and tired and need to shower. This is the attraction. This, this is, is the real here. attraction. This is the thrill right here. This is food and wine festival. <laughs> oh, who's a good girl? You wanna go for a walk? Where you going? Where you going? Come on, let's go for a walk. Come on. Oh yeah, oh, 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 oh. look at that butt. And with that, we are done here today. Look at that, four hats in one video. That's a hat trick. Well, it's well beyond a hat trick. But I had a great food and wine festival. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There was a lot of great things that I loved. I did not like the, the pasta in the Italy Pavilion, but I did love the paella. Uh, all right, my top three. Bada boom. My top three food and wine festival items. Number one, no, number three is the pickled milkshake. Only because there's so much conspiracy going on about it. I know today was opening day, but the second I opened up my phone, all I saw was pickled milkshake, pickled milkshake, pickled milkshake. It was crazy, and I don't know how some people hate it. It's like taking a bite of a cheeseburger and then drinking a vanilla milkshake. You take a bite of the cheeseburger, you sip the milkshake, that's what it tasted like. I didn't think it tasted horrible, and I don't even like pickles. And then I'm gonna put my pa paella, my paella at number two, and then my warm chocolate pudding cake from Ireland that one is just so good I loved it I didn't like the Italian booth the, the Italy pasta dish that wasn't my favorite um, what's something oh I did not like uh, the barbecue potato chips on the bottom of that uh, the chocolate uh, little candy bar at the uh, flavors from fire I don't know it just wasn't a great combination it tasted like the soda uh, the uh, the Japanese the plum soda in Club Cool it tasted like that in candy bar form and the total the total was 200 and six dollars. Two hundred and six dollars. Now, I did buy other stuff, like I said, watermelon and Powerade, and I paid for all of my friends' food, so if they reviewed it, I paid for it. Um, but uh, yeah, two hundred and six dollars, one day of food and wine. But we got a lot of stuff. I feel like we got a lot. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Part two will be out soon. We're definitely gonna be covering the ones that we didn't get to do, so make sure you guys follow along for that. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye! I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. I almost didn't say it. I almost didn't say it. But bye! <laughs>